Well, I would like to ask um, Professor Bernard Giesen uh, to be the second scholar introducing this debate. Professor Giesen is, is professor of sociology at the University of Constance and also associated with Yale University and is now leading the only center of excellence in the social sciences in Germany, actually, which has received funding on a massive scale recently. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, I can easily refer to Don Levin's um, uh, thesis because I would like to start with the assumption that, indeed, modernity is an essentially contested concept. It's more a field of contestations, of resonances, of correspondences, of conflicts than a unified program. And only from a very grand and large distance we can condense it to uh, <coughs> represent uh, this kind of unified cultural program. Uh, and something which came to my mind when I was listening to uh, the debate about the axial age, something, an element and a consequence of axial age and also of modernity uh, that has been uh, yeah, downplayed a little bit is, or even ignored in our debate, is that uh, axial age, the principled um, rule of a transcendental order, is something that is also closely associated with intolerance. And that the, the ugly flip side and of all projects of modernity is also intolerance and barbarism, the dark side, so to speak. Uh, if I'm asked to systematize these movements of modernity, these projects of modernity that are contesting each other and corresponding to each other, I would like to distinguish between four, at least four different types of projects. The first is the one that we uh, know about, that is the project of Voltaire and Condorcet and uh, uh, Adam Smith, it's the wall of rationality, the principled uh, rule of reason and uh, of uh, impersonal um, uh, principles, the wall of science, uh, that is the new world of the 18th and uh, uh, late um, uh, 17th uh, century. Uh, to this project, and that is sometimes considered to be an anti-project to modernity, there is a second movement. That is a, uh, um, a movement that as was associated usually with romanticism, ranging till surrealism, uh, a project that we, uh, or a movement that we uh, can uh, connect to authors like uh, Baudelaire, uh, Novalis, Nietzsche, Bataille. It is about trespassing the rules of rationality. It's about violating uh, the, the uh, principles, uh, the impersonal principles, and plunging into the dark abyss, so to speak, of um, subjective uh, uh, individuality and personality. It is something, if you allow me to uh, suggest that kind of picture. It's the Jericho's Hellner's raft of the Medusa uh, drifting without any kind of direction. And this uh, very demanding project, the second project of modernity or second movement of modernity, had of course um, uh, 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 triggered off uh, and stimulated some, uh, uh, some third, uh, kind of third movement and that is the movement uh, that is uh, asking for new certainties. It's a new quest for community. It is associated with nationalism, of course. It's associated with um, uh, communism. It's associated with uh, the new rise of uh, ethnic consciousness, fundamentalism, and of course also uh, with uh, some new uh, social movements and uh, finally with the return of religion. And I would like to discern a certain uh, force project of modernity, or movement of modernity, which is quite uh, young, and that can be uh, rel uh, related to an increasing reflexive awareness of the hidden barbarism in the project of modernity. And this is something that uh, is related to the concept of cultural trauma, of uh, an awareness of victimization uh, as something that is the uh, um, the, the corollary, so to speak, uh, of impersonal or the, the merciless rule of impersonal reason. Of course, uh, as you might have uh, noticed, uh, a lot of these ideas are inspired by um, Schmuel Eisenstadt's uh, works on uh, Jacobinism and uh, the project of uh, modernity. Do I have yes. another two, two minutes? And then I, I would like to 
address your attention to something that uh, is remarkable with respect to the concept of multiple modernities um, launched by um, Shmuel Eisenstadt. Uh, on the first glance, it mirrors, in a way, the uh, discourse on cultural diversity and translate that to a global scope and global uh, range. But it's not only this. It's also something that is associated with uh, the demise of the nation state and it replaces a nation state as a carrier of, um, of modernity or of the modern movement or di uh, diversity of modern movement as I tried to outline by cultures and civilizations. On the first glance that seems to be a, a, a smart move but it has some risks because in contrast to nation states that are demarcated by clear-cut boundaries, cultures have no such thing as boundaries. Cultures consist of translations, transitions, narratives, performances, interpretations. It's more a process than a structural unit. And uh, you could think that uh, this shift from nation state to cultural civilization as a carrier of modernity, um, yeah, also risks to be blurred and to be, uh, yeah, embark into um, conceptually an unprecise uh, territory. Uh, of course, Schmuel Eisenstadt tries to account for that feature of mod modernity, of the culture of modernity by talking about uh, ever and ever again about reconstructions, fluidifications, and so on and so on. But as a matter of fact, he also prefers the grand distance of uh, Voltaire, Weber, Spengler, uh, Spengler and, uh, uh, or Fögelin, uh, or, or, or Toynbee, uh, if he talks about civiliz civilizations. But uh, what seems to be, at the first glance, uh, something that uh, is a risky endeavor turns out to be a smart move. Because in talking about a civilization as a whole, he pays attention to a very special feature of cultures in general. Because cultures, if you are uh, talking a language, if you are uh, living within a culture, you are usually trying to conceive of it, of culture or of a language, as a homogeneous unit. And only from an outside perspective, you're seeing the diversity of oppositions, contradictions, and so on and so on. So if Schmuel Eisenstadt talks about culture as a whole, although he abhors totalistic visions, of course, he somehow reproduces the process of culture within, from a within perspective, and that is something uh, which is important. And finally, I would like to ask for a certain completion in the Eisenstadtian architecture of world history. That is uh, something that um, Professor Eisenstadt could uh, devote his next 25 years uh, of, of research. That is something uh, like introducing this concept of plurality and diversity that he so remarkably was uh, uh, introducing to, uh, to the Excel age and also to uh, modernity uh, to the uh, uh, process that is usually called the Neolithical Revolution. And w which is the only major transition that he didn't cover uh, in his work up till now. Thank you. Thank you so much.